Hello and welcome to another video from me, Penultimate Dave. So this is probably going to become a uh, series of uh, videos that I'm going to do. Um, and, and this is uh, something uh, I've been asked to do quite a bit. And this is um, to talk about Grail pens. And, um, and not only Grail pens, but also like the path to the Grail pen. Um, we don't all start out wanting Grail pens or 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 buying pens like these. So I really wanted to sort of almost like document sort of and and uh, like a lot of people that follow me or know me well know what my path has been to 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 the, the Grail pens. But uh, I just really wanted to talk about sort of my path and sort of how it ended up for me or, or worked out and and how it worked out along the way um so i'm just going to move this lovely uh, pen tray of pens out the way and bring in these instead and these are, are what started me off down the pen road so <clears throat> i started probably around the age of 10 with fountain pens and I and I use them up to the age of around about 16 when I was in school sitting for my final exams uh, nobody back then there was no internet nobody told me how to clean pens or or even that I had to clean a fountain pen I would just keep re-inking it up I'd be using really uh, terrible school paper very toothy fibrous paper so paper um, fibers would get sort of between the tines of the nibs, uh, ink flow would be impeded, and, and I'd have lots of issues. So, um, nobody actually told me how to clean pens, as I said. And around about the age of 16, I thought, that's it. No more. I, I'm done with fountain pens. And about, what, probably three decades, three more than three decades later, uh, I started getting some... Um, uh, some suggestions on Amazon and uh, I decided hey look let's just try a couple of what were Jinhao pens so uh, I bought a pack of these uh, Jinhao X450s and they're not bad pens um, they're Chinese made uh, mass produced and um, metal sections um, now for me the these were all fine nibs and the Jinhao X250s came scratchy as can be. Um, I didn't like them. Um, I've since learned how to tune a pen, uh, tune a nib, uh, with Micromesh, and, and now these write perfect. Um, but it took me a good year before I started to, to tune the pens. So, th these were, I think I bought a pack of four for about £20. Pounds. Um, and then I, I bought some uh, Jin Hao um, X450s, and these come in at varying different colours. Uh, like there's this blue, lovely blue one, which I, I still love. I've never got rid of this this red one, which is uh, uh, almost like a like a red type cracked ice. And then uh, there's this like black and sort of like white swirl version as well, which I, I kind of like a lot. So I. Uh, I got these, these came with medium nibs and I really liked them, buttery smooth, very very wet pens, again I was paying like, I want to say somewhere between 5 and 10 pounds for, for, for these, um, so probably around about probably 7 to 12 dollars maybe for the pen i was buying from a, a uk ebay at the time and uh they were obviously marking them up a little bit i could have got them cheaper from from china um but uh you see sort of this this swirl is is really really nice so um uh, I was prepared to pay the extra to, to not have to wait like several months. Um, but my, my main pen, which I thought I really liked at the time, were these Waterman Hemispheres. Uh, 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 Waterman Hemisphere Essentials, actually. And and they're really nice. Uh, brushed aluminium pens. Uh, still nibs, still. But these had number five size nibs. So, so you, you can see like the kind of difference here 
between the the size and the nibs. Actually, I even want to say they're more like a, a size four, to be honest. But um, um, and and I bought bought one of these in a fine from Amazon. I think I paid about fifty pounds, around about that 40, 40, 40 to fifty pounds, and it was okay. Nothing spectacular, but it was okay. So I thought, well. Okay, uh, I've read a lot online about sort of uh, the differences between nibs, so m maybe I will I'll buy a second one and see if that's any better. So I bought a second fine, and it was slightly better than the first one, and I thought, well, maybe I could send the first one back, but I decided I wouldn't in the end. And um, so I, I literally had two now, two fine nibs, and and I thought, well, okay let's buy a medium nib so i bought a medium nib which was even worse than not only the second uh fine i got but the first fine it was very scratchy and i thought well okay maybe medium is not what i want so i then bought a fourth fine so you can kind of see where i'm going with this and um the fourth fine was perfect or almost perfect like it was better than than all of the three nibs put together, so I really like that. But but then I I, I I thought well I don't know like this pen is the section's very thin. I don't know if it's if it's really the pen for me after all of that. So bearing in mind I had just put down around about sort of fifty pound each on on four pens. Um, I, I started looking at Twisby, so like the Twisby Diamond Five Eighty AL. And, and they are really good and uh piston um and i think they're about is it about 70 pounds something like that but uh much much better size in terms of thickness or girth of the pen and and length of the pen uh again steel nib um but it's not uh, so twisby use like a 5.5 nib size so you can see that that's slightly larger um but uh, it's not sort of uh, as large as, say, a um, number six nib would be. So, like, a number six nib is still going to be quite a bit more. Um, but I do like these Twisbees. And to be honest, I, I I went down the route of thinking, well, you know what, actually, I'll put some Diamine Shimitastic inks that I then started to buy in these. And they, they work really well. So I ended up buying five uh, Twisby Diamond 580 ALs in the end, and I dedicate these now purely to shimmer, shimmering inks. So Shimmer Tastic or Jehovan, um 1670s, or the the new Amethyst. Um, I also looked at Faber Castell, and um, I looked at I looked at Faber Castell. I also looked at Faber Castell, and I kind of like um, the idea of. Um, the the sort of carbon fiber weave that that's on this pen here so um i, I really do like that and uh i kind of like the shape of the pen again it's not that thick of a pen uh but uh had a rubbery grip to it lengthwise is pretty good again another steel nib nothing wrong with steel nibs i still buy steel nib pens but um that nib was perfect absolutely perfect and i i since bought a, a faber castell loom uh which to be honest the nib wasn't as nice um but uh i i really do like this pen and it's a pen that i've just not been able to bring myself to sell and, and it only cost me about 25 pounds um i did go down the route of the the lamy all-star i i now have a, a lamy safari all black um and also Alami Lux as well. Uh, again, nothing wrong with these. A again, they're a thicker pen, quite long. Again, a steel nib. Um, uh, and uh, this one uh, is is like a... Uh, I, don't, I don't know what if it's a number five or number six, to be honest. But it, it's, it's a, I guess, in comparison to a, a number six. Because Lamy nibs are different. Uh, it's probably more of a five size nib, but um, it's uh, again they're solid writers, Lamy's. Um, so the, the the problem you get 
and and I guess not everybody has this problem, but you get to the point where you're buying a range of pens here, um, varying prices from like five pounds, like up to like forty-five pound, maybe sixty-seven. I think it's probably sixty pound for that. Uh, twenty-five pound for the Faber Castell. I uh, and and I think the All Stars like twenty-five pound or something. So, so y you're getting to the point where you're trying a load of different pens, and then suddenly you're realizing that uh, although there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with most of these pens, other than how the nib feels, you get to the point where you think, well, there has to be something better. So, some people will just continue buying pens in that price range they'll have that upper limit and and i had an upper limit of uh, at that point or almost like 50 pound was was my upper limit uh and i think i i went slightly over that with the twisby and um but then, then you, you start looking well okay what other pens are there and then there's so so you, in a lot of cases like you might find another good pen in that price limit but a lot of people will raise the price limit they're prepared to pay to see if they can get a slightly better quality uh pen either in terms of the quality itself or the look um of the pen or the feel of the pen so like you have these sort of um platinum 3776s um these come with a gold nib um it's a very hard nib, uh, very scratchy, I found, on a medium nib. Um, but then they're nice, they've got a gold trim, very plain, sort of like a, a translucent blue. Um, it is um, still a cartridge converter pen, though. So, um, and there's nothing wrong with cartridge converters. I, I still, still to this very day, actually in a lot of cases prefer them from a cleaning perspective um but then i sort of upped the price a little bit and uh the this is a waterman karen and um this this actually normally retails for around about 125 pound in the uk uh i paid on uh, i got it from amazon on sale for 75 and still i've not seen them really that low in price uh on amazon ever again or, or anywhere else so um and, and again I, this is a snap cap uh but it comes with like this semi sort of like hooded nib type uh here and um it, it's it's uh it's a lovely pen it's a gold nib uh kind of reminds me like of the parker 51 that i had as a as a as a child but um i I like this. It, it's it's a very smooth, the smoothest nib I'd had at that point. Um, and again, it's a um, cartridge converter, um, and uh, I I do like it. And um, but I paid about seventy five pound. And then I I bought some Conklin Nighthawks from Goulet, uh, which came in around about a hundred pound i bought a couple of those uh but at each point you start thinking well is there a better pen available are you finding a better pen or grail pen um within your price range or price bracket and then if you're not finding them then well maybe you have to increase them a little bit so so that's at each point at each stage that is what i did and this is what a lot of us do when when you're you're on that collecting stage. It's it's getting to the point trying to find that pen that is so much better than the pen you had. And sometimes you're like if you're not finding that pen on the price range, then you're willing to maybe increase that price by ten percent or twenty five percent or even a hundred percent. So I think the most expensive pen I bought. Um, before my first growl was uh, probably about 120 pound, 150 maybe. Um, so that I'll move these out and bring back some of my growl pens that uh, I showed you at the start of the video. And 
So my first grail pen was the Visconti London Fog. So as I said, I, I literally, until I bought this pen, I, I literally only spent about 125, 150 pound maybe. Uh, and that was my top end that I was willing to pay. The Visconti London Fog is around five to six hundred pound discounted. Um, I I watched a number of videos from Stephen Brown and Brian Goulet. I fell in love with this, um, and this is inked, so you you won't see the pattern as well um, because it will be quite dark. But it has a lovely, lovely swirl pattern uh, in in the pen, and and this is just. What I would class as a growl pen, um, now some people like to call them growls and some people not. Growl comes from really the meaning that the holy growl, something that is never found, is never obtainable. Um, these are obviously, however, a lot of these come in, in limited uh, pr um, uh, production runs. So like this one, for instance, London Fog, comes in 888. Um, some of them will come in in maybe 8,000 or 5,000 uh, production run. Some will come in 50 or 30 pens made. Or some even maybe 5 or even 2. So it really just depends on... Um, uh, like it doesn't necessarily affect the price of the pen. But, um, but for me, this was the pen that I wanted. And... Up until that point, I'd already always discarded this and said, "There's no way I'm ever going to get this pen," purely because it, it's it's between five and six hundred pound. So that's really like five to six times really what I'd paid previously for a pen, a single pen. Um, but as I said, like like for me these are grail these are considered grail pens and and even though they are obtainable a grail pen to me is really something that that is either outside or way outside of your comfort level in terms of price or what you're willing to pay for a pen and that to me is a grail pen and and this was a grail pen for sure so this was my first pen my first grail pen i should say and um the the interesting thing about this is uh, i went to buy this from a uk retailer and at that point i hadn't realized what i wanted in terms of a nib width i'd had a lot of fine nibs i, I had a few gin how medium nibs that were perfect so i kind of thought i wanted a medium nib so i went to the the retailer and said hey look if you got this in a medium nib, and they said, well, we've only got one London Fog from Visconti, and it's a fine nib. But we do have two Florentine Hills, uh, one with a fine and one with a medium. We could swap the nibs out. And I was like, well, doesn't that like create like a Franken-style pen? Like uh, at that point, I'd never swapped nibs, and I hadn't realised that that like obviously like this was something that doesn't uh, affect the manufacturer warranty in any shape or form. So I, in the end, after much uh, sort of thought, I, I decided, you know what, I'll just go with the fine nib because I don't really want the retailer messing around with the nib. So I ordered this with a fine nib. It came the next day. And I took a few very hurried photos of, of the pen back then. And I inked it up and started to write with it. And this was the most perfect writing pen that I had ever had at, at, until that point in, in my collection. And it was so perfect that I immediately got on the phone and said, Hey, look, do you still have the Florentine Hills, but in the medium nib. And they said, let's just check. Yep, we do still have it. Sold, I said. And I bought that. And so I then got the Florentine Hills the next day, and that was perfect as well. So this is kind of like, people ask me, why have I gone down the Visconti route? This, for me, is the reason why. The pens are so... Um, so lovely looking some people say they're called art or, or very arty uh, or artsy in form um i i, I don't discount that but um 
it's a look of the pen that, that appeals to me. It's how they write that appeals to me as well. Um, so uh, this pen, even to this very day, is perfect for me in terms of length, in terms of weight, in terms of size, uh, in terms of look, in terms of how it writes. It's just perfect in every single way. And that to me is what a Grail pen should be. It's not always the case uh, that it will turn out that way, but, but that's how it should be. And ever since then, I've gone down um, the Visconti route more than anything, but I have got a lot of other, what I would consider growl pens or, or more expensive pens. Uh, and I think in terms of Visconti, I have over 50 Viscontis now. They're not all the price of the London Fog. Um, some more expensive than the London Fog, some are less expensive. But um, for me, Visconti have always written well. Um, the only thing I would say in the last year is that I've had a, a number of uh, pens that have been uh, new releases that have written not fire hose wet, not even wet, but quite dry. And those I have um, learned to uh, how to increase the ink flow on them with um, uh, shimmying the, the tines by feeding a brass shim between them and just opening up those tines a little bit. And then they write perfect. Now, if you're paying that sort of money, should a nib come writing very dry is debatable. A lot of people will say it's not acceptable. Um, from my personal perspective, it's a personal choice that I want a fire hose wet nib. So for me, uh, it's a personal choice. And, and a, uh, a manufacturer cannot conform to everybody's personal choice. So in that respect i have no problems with that um if a nib is scratchy or very feedbacky then that's where it tends to become more of an issue with me and and i will smooth the nib but i think in terms of 50 visconti nibs i think i've only had problems with two that i've had to send back where they were scratchy uh and uh i think there's only two of the still van gogh nibs that weren't fully to my liking in terms of how smooth they wrote so i smoothed the steel nibs on those but outside of that the palladium nibs the gold nibs i've not had to touch them at all so here's really just a few more of of some of the growl pens i have so um like the here i have the armando simone club bologna extra i love this pen um I love some of the um, Omas Arcos. Uh, this is the brown Arco. Um, there's also the the green or the verde Arco. And um, but this is a massive, massive pen. Um, very weighty. I think it's around about sixty grams or thereabouts. Um, you don't want to post the pen because it becomes really silly and back back heavy. Um, but it's such a lovely, lovely pen. Actually, I'll show you there the... Uh, I'm going to zoom in on that nib there. That nib is, is just stunning. Now, um, Armando Simone Club call this the Magic Flex. Now, uh, I wouldn't even call this a semi-flex. It's really not that flexible at all. Um, but um, it does write very nicely. Um, like I, I have Viscontis that will flex more than that, palladium nibs or even gold nibs. But um, it's a lovely pen. And, and this is, for me, a grail pen for sure. It's such a a stunning pen. And um, I, I've had a few people say that I'm into bling pens. I don't consider these bling. Um, some of you may. Um, and this is a classic pens LB5 uh, I picked up at the London Pen Show in 2015. Uh, no, sorry, not 2015, 2017. And uh, this is again stunning. It's a um, uh, a fusion bonded acrylic, uh, and the the material in this is for me is just absolutely stunning. You can just see how the the light gets picked up on that acrylic uh, it's actually made by the, the lb5s are made by sailor this is classic pens lb5 um 
and uh, the nib, like these are very fat pens. These, these are basically king of pens, uh, Sailor King of pens, and you can see there. It's a lovely Sailor nib. Um, so uh, I I really do like these. I did have the option of picking up two, but they were outside of my budget already. So I only picked up one. I, well, I picked up the LB5 and I picked up the LM1, which has the same fusion bonded acrylic. This is a red finish, though. Uh, so you can see how that finishes. Um, but because this is a LM1, it actually comes with a Bok standard nib. And um, there you go. But... Um, it's uh again the, the nib is is very good uh and i've got other bock nibs as well um but uh the sailor nib is more springy more bouncy uh but again this is a growl pen for me uh i wanted a Raden pen and i really wanted an m1000 Raden, but um then pelican released the m800 royal gold Raden. And this basically, these gold stripes are, are abalone shell. And uh, you can kind of see um, how each stripe is made up of abalone shell. And uh, it's really, really lovely. Um, stunning pen. Uh, I love the size of the M800s and, uh, from Pelican. And uh, this, this comes with a uh, 18 karat gold nib. Uh, from Pelican. Now these are different than the M1000 nibs. They're smaller. These are a number six size nib instead of a number eight size nib in the 1000. But um, these are, tend to be a little bit more harder, more firmer um, than the M1000. The M1000 is very bouncy, very springy. So, um, but I do love the M800. So uh, that's. Uh, uh, again a favorite of mine I like all of my M800s that I have um, now when I was looking at the London Fog before I'd also been looking at videos of the Opera Master and the Opera Master at the time was more expensive and, and not accessible in the UK so I'd been, I'd been hunting for about a year and I managed to pick up a second hand version that somebody was selling of the Opera Master Crimson Tide and you can just see from there's a little bit of uh, water um, residue in the barrel there where I'd been cleaning it. It's frosted up a little bit, but um, y you can see that the pattern on this is is just perfect. It's a it's a lovely pen, and this comes with a like all of the Opera Masters uh, comes with a 23 carat palladium nib, and this was my first 1.3 millimeter stub, uh, and I. I absolutely love it. I, I thought that I was going to need to swap it out, and now suddenly I really, really like uh, stubs. Um, and then uh, a very special person managed to secure this for me at, uh, at one of the shows. And um, this is the Visconti Camelot. And uh, I've shown other videos of this, and it's just stunning pen I've shown this on Instagram as well Instagram live but it's Camelot so it, it's actually got the sword as a clip um, not much play on the clip but just a li enough to allow you to, to uh, clip it onto your shirt the, the detail here is just stunning um, and this is a power vac filler and uh, the it's just a perfect perfect it's an 18 karat gold nib and it, it's it's a juicy wet nib it's a uh it's it's a very wet wet nib and uh very smooth and and i do love that so that for me again was another growl so for me growls don't necessarily now have to go up in price i have that upper limit um which for me now is, uh, I guess, probably 1500 Um 
I don't see myself buying pens above that. If I can get a pen for a lot cheaper than uh, than that price, um, then I'll still buy it. And uh, there was this Belgica that I I bought, um, and and this was never inked. It was uh, from a a guy who was thinning out his collection, and uh, it's just a stunning, stunning pen with this gold overlay. And um, again, this is really for me is is a Grail pen. Uh, and if I unscrew the cap. You'll see again the the nib here. Now this is an 18 karat gold broad nib, um, and uh, it really, really is a fire hose nib. It's more like a double broad, um, but hey, I like I like broad nibs. So uh, but let's even focus in on here. So you can just see the level of detail here. You've got the crowns uh, on both ends. It's a, a stunning, stunning pen. So again, for me, that's a Grail pen. Um, there's also the the um, Visconti Stack Celluloids. Now, some of these can be more expensive than others. This is the Octagonal um, from uh, Stilograph Corsani. Uh, this again for me is a grail pen. I would say probably a grail pen is something in the price range of five hundred pounds more or more probably. I would say, um, but yeah, this this to me is 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 a stunning stunning pen. It's uh, the stack celluloid, and I have a few of these. I have the Costani ninety. Um, I have the Wall Street as well. I have the Davina Metropolitan. And this is a board. Um, it's quite a crisp board, um, but uh, you see there the nib. But um, it's a really, really nice, um, nice uh, um, pen. And then I guess the final one, which is one that I've added more recently, and I've done an unboxing video on this, is the Visconti Luxor. And um, this is a Mackie pen uh, with eight layers of lacquer on top. And for me, again, this is just a stunning pen. So, again, this is, uh, I would say this pen achieves grail status. And... Um, now this this doesn't have a gold nib on because it's a more recent uh, uh, creation from Visconti, so it does have a a uh, palladium nib, 23 cap palladium, uh, and uh, I can only get this in a medium, but uh, I do like mediums, and um, so so this for me is a really really nice pen, and and one that I really really like. And you can see there that the um, the raw here. Is uh, uh, actually etched in 18 karat gold, so uh, really see that that picks up the light there. Um, stunning pen, um, again, grail status for me. Um, this has to be a grail pen for sure. Um, the price is very expensive on these, um, but uh, for me, it was well worth it. So, really, that's that's really sort of my history on, on um, a brief history on on um, starting out with fountain pens and and what I what I bought and um, and, and how how quickly I, I got to grow status pens and and how I've continued down that road. I, I still buy Lamy Safaris uh, that are. 20, uh, 18 pound pens uh, I, I still buy other cheap or cheaper pens than than these growls but I uh, I, I do have a mix of pens um, but I do like a lot of these growl pens because of as you can see here the varying designs the beauty of the pens and and how they write so this really is going to probably be a first in the series of, of Grail Pen videos where I'll show off some more pens on the next video. But I just wanted to show these off to you today uh, so you could just see a few, just a few of, of the Grail Pens that I have 
in my collection. So thanks for watching, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.